Hello everybody, welcome to Boxing Science. This video is sponsored by Saga Fitness. Saga Fitness are specialists in blood flow restriction training. And in this video, I'm gonna be covering my top 10 exercises for BFR training. So a lot of people have seen us use the cuffs down here at Boxing Science. You can actually get these with a 10% discount using the Boxing Science discount code. But a lot of questions are fired over to us across social media on which exercises are gonna be most, most beneficial for BFR training. Of course, it's very specialist training method to help increase strength and muscular hypertrophy. Due to the blood flow restriction, it limits us in the different exercises that we can do. So in this video, I'm gonna be covering the top 10 exercises that we use and explain some of the benefits and reasonings of how we uh, apply these exercises for BFR training. So the first one and probably the most common exercise that we use are bicep curls. Now, building strong arms is important to protect the upper limb uh, during like kind of high uh, boxing volumes and high forces. However, we don't want to put on non-functional mass or activate slow twitch muscle fibers in the arms because this might slow our punches down. Furthermore, it's hard to target fast twitch muscle fibers when training the arms because we can't really overload them too much and go for low volume, high intensity sets as this will uh, damn it, like overload the bicep tendon and we want to try and protect this as much as we can. We don't want to be getting tendons inflamed because it, once the tendon's inflamed and we're going back into boxing training, this can increase the likelihood of injury. Using BFR during bicep curls will fatigue the slow twitch muscle fibers to then activate and develop the fast switch muscle fibers of the arm, gaining functional mass of the bicep that will help contribute to successful boxing performance. For this protocol, we want to be using anywhere between five and 10 kilo dumbbells. And you want to follow the 30, 15, 15, 15 protocol that we've shared on the YouTube channel uh, quite recently. The next exercise is the banded tricep pushdown. Triceps are an important muscle to help accelerate the arm towards the target and create the snap and produce force at the end range of the punch. However, boxers can find it problematic when aiming to develop the triceps in isolation. This often is due to limitations in shoulder mobility or due to the elbow pain with the joint being exposed to high weight loads. So using BFR will help athletes target triceps in, in isolation without going too heavy. At Boxing Science, we like to use the tricep push down using the band, attaching the broomstick to the band and using the, uh, using the band as resistance. We start from a standing position and we look to progress by uh, progressing into a kneeling position and we wanted to use the 30, 15, 15, 15 protocol again for this as well. The next exercise that we're going to suggest is using the sand bucket. Now here's me explaining it whilst training Jordan Gill in his rehab uh, for his hand injury. Okay, so what we're doing with Jordan here is doing some low impact, low load, like grip work, forearm work, um, just to start trying to improve that grip strength. Um, is not able to actually lift weights at the moment, um, lift it through his hands. So this is gonna be strengthening up his hands. We were using the BFR cuffs just to provide that little bit of more um, kind of strain on, on the forearm muscles. So we're creating more adaptation because when we're doing the sand work, it's because it's so low load, um, might not be able to kind of overload to be able to create them physical adaptations in grip strength. So the BFR cuffs just allows to overload that stimulus, create that uh, kind of metabolic stress in the muscle and create some strength adaptations. The next exercise is press-ups using the BFR cuffs. Press-ups are one of the most common and effective tools in improving upper body pressing strength. However, many athletes struggle to optimize the development and activation of the pectoral muscles during press-ups due to weakness in the triceps, instability of the shoulder, and also a lack of core strength as well. So a regression from this would be to go from the floor into an incline position. So you could use a bench or a box to be performing the press-ups around about a 30 degree angle. However, these are often too light to stimulate an athlete and to develop strength. Using the BFR cuffs can increase the intensity and the adaptations from incline press-ups, as well as fatiguing the triceps to help increase the demand and activation of the pectoral muscles. 
You would perform the 30, 15, 15, 15 rep range uh, just using the incline, but if you're finding that quite easy, do your 30 reps on the incline and then progress to the press-ups, probably at a, a less steeper incline or doing it from the floor. But either way, you're gonna feel the burn of the pectoral muscles and these are great uh, exercise to put in to your general preparation phase to build up upper body strength and upper body hypertrophy. The TRX row is a fantastic exercise to develop the upper back muscles, especially the latissimus dorsi. However, many athletes struggle to optimize activation of the lats due to tightness around the shoulders and the biceps possibly fatiguing before the back muscles actually do. Using the BFR cuffs can increase the fatigue of the arms, which will then increase the activation of the lat muscles towards the back end of uh, the 30, 15, 15, 15 protocol. I'd say to perform this at a 45 degree angle and you want to maintain the technique throughout the set. If you're finding this quite easy, take your feet a little bit closer to the anchor point so you create a steeper angle for you to uh, feel the burn in your arms and upper back muscles a little bit more. BFR with lateral raises is an effective tool in promoting shoulder strength and strength endurance. Developing strong shoulders for boxing is vital in improving and increasing force development during punches, reducing injury risk, and also to improve strength endurance. However, due to the repetitive nature and the anterior dominance of boxing, shoulders become quite tight, especially on the anterior shoulder, and end up being quite weak at the posterior shoulder muscles. This makes it difficult to develop strength in the weight room, as the tightness of the shoulders and the weakness of the posterior shoulder muscles make it difficult to lift a sufficient load to overload the sh whole shoulder muscle complex. Performing the BFR lateral raises will help overload the shoulder complex on lighter loads. This can improve the oxidative capacity of the shoulder muscles that will help improve shoulder endurance. We'd suggest to perform the 30-15-15-15 protocol using lat raises, probably from a seated position. So this can increase the demand of the shoulder muscle. We'd say to use as light as 2.5 kilograms or stepping up to five or 7.5 kilograms, but you are gonna go generally light on this one. Performing BFR with the shoulder press. Developing strong shoulders are important for powerful punching, reducing injury risk, and also increasing strength endurance. However, due to the repetitive nature of boxing and the, and the high force demands and the anterior dominance of boxing, shoulders can end up being quite tight anteriorly and then quite weak in the posterior muscles. Along with postural stability issues, this makes it quite difficult for boxers to lift heavy overhead. Athletes will struggle to maintain a neutral posture and start to compensate using the lower back muscles. And also being able to, able to press through the sticking point they have to use the triceps. And because boxers are quite weak in the triceps, they're unable to sufficiently overload the shoulder towards the top range of the movement. Using BFR will help us lift overhead with light loads and still target strength and muscular hypertrophy adaptations. It will also help fatigue the tricep muscles, which will increase the demand on the shoulder muscles, will increase activation and promote physical adaptations of the shoulder muscle. So we'd perform the 30, 15, 15, 15 protocol again on this one, and we perform it anywhere between 7.5 and 12.5 kilo dumbbells. We'd suggest for you to do this in a seated position without a back support. This will challenge postural stability and also target the posterior shoulder muscles more. You can further increase the demand of this by performing this in a Z press position. This is basically sitting on the floor, sitting in the upright position. This is great exercise to target the shoulder muscles with reduced weight load. Goblet squats using the BFR cuffs. In our research, we have found that lower limb muscle mass has a strong correlation with punching power. This makes the maintenance and the increase of lower limb muscle mass a primary target for our strength and conditioning programs. However, we only have a short amount of time to target these adaptations due to us not wanting to make our athletes sore and also there's increased energy expenditure demands when the boxing training and conditioning training steps up during camp and also less calories available when they're looking to lose body mass in order for them to make weight for competition. 
Furthermore, high loads and high volume squats will make athletes extremely sore, and this can be straining on the lower limb tendons. We want to reduce soreness so our athletes can perform optimally in boxing and conditioning sessions. So we need something that is light and less strenuous. We need something that has low metabolic costs and something that's not gonna make our athletes sore the next day, affecting other parts of their training. So this is where BFR can come into play and have a big impact on lower body hypertrophy. Performing BFR will increase the demand of the lower body and increase signals for hypertrophy without exposing our athletes to high weight loads. BFR can speed up the adaptations, meaning that we can see gains in lower body mass in just three to four weeks. We normally do this during a general preparation phase, right at the start of training camp. We perform these with body weight squats or goblet squats because we're wanting to perform an exercise where we can maintain technique when we're going through to like kind of high levels of fatigue. When we do the squats, the athletes are more or less like uh, crawling on the floor in pain after this. So the last thing that we want to do is do a heavy loaded back squat or doing a, a, a barbell variation where we can see a little bit of forward anterior lean. We're wanting to make sure that we're maintaining technique the best way possible. So performing body weight squats, a plate squat to press or a goblet squat is ideal to do uh, with the BFR lower limb cuffs. So walking lunges with the BFR cuffs. Successful boxers need to have strong legs, but due to the demands of boxing being in a split stance, this means that we can see muscular imbalances between left and right leg. So this makes unilateral single leg exercises very important in developing our boxers during strength conditioning sessions. Performing lunges are a great way to improve single leg strength. However, due to the high eccentric demand, this can create a lot of lower body soreness. And we don't want this to uh, come into play with our athletes because we're wanting them to optimize their boxing and conditioning sessions. So adding the BFR cuffs to walking lunges can help promote unilateral leg strength and hypertrophy at reduced weight loads and reduce lower body soreness. Now doing walking lunges for 30 reps on each side can end up being quite time consuming. So we'd suggest to perform 30 reps doing a light loaded goblet squat or, or body weight squat and then proceeding into doing 15 reps on each side on the walking lunges and performing three sets of this. Hip thrusts using the BFR cuffs. The glute muscles are an important contributor to hip extension and the hip rotation. We need these movements to be rapid in order to transfer force from the lower body through to the fist during a punching action. Boxers struggle with glute strength due to tight hips and also the lack of strength and movement training that they've been introduced to from a young age. And even when performing glute exercises, boxers will struggle to activate the glutes just due to the hamstrings and lower back being stronger and wanting to compensate whilst extending the hips. So using the BFR cuffs will help increase activation of the glute muscles during hip thrusts or during uh, glute bridges. It helps fatigue the hamstrings during hip extension. So then it will increase the glute activation. So you can perform this uh, from a glute bridge position, so from the floor, and then you can progress this from a hip thrust. And I suggest to do body weight on this because you'll end up feeling uh, quite sore in your glutes after doing this one. That's our top 10 exercises to perform with BFR cuffs. And like I said at the start, if you're wanting to get access to these BFR cuffs, we suggest to use Saga Fitness. Saga Fitness uh, specialists in wireless technology to perform BFR training and you can get uh, your BFR cuffs by clicking on the link below. And you can also save 10% discount. Okay guys, thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you on the next video.